A very good evening to you. Welcome. Well, let's start by asking this question. Where is President Bola Tinubu? This is the question on lips of many Nigerians. There has been speculation and concern for the Nigerian president's whereabouts and these speculations for his whereabouts and indeed his well-being continues to grow. The Nigerian president departed the country for the Netherlands in Europe on an official visit uh, on April 23, 2024. From the Netherlands, he flew to Saudi Arabia for the World Economic Forum's special meetings on global co collaboration, growth, and energy for development. Um, but that event ended on the 29th of April, 2024, last month. And the president has not released any statement of the presidency has not released any statement on why Mr. President is yet to return to Nigeria. Well, speculation, though not confirmed, is that the president is in London. Well, will the Nigerian presidency make a statement regarding this? Should they even be expected to make a statement regarding this? Do Nigerians deserve to know where their president is as we speak? Our guest tonight, Ivan Sufeli, is a legal practitioner. He joins us from uh, Georgia via video link. Good evening to you, Evans. It's good to know uh, that you're with us tonight, mm -hmm. even though you're joining us from another part of the world. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, I, I know you're not a presidential spokesman, Evans. I also know that yeah. um, <laughs> you're not in Nigeria as we speak, but I don't know. I, I still am tempted to ask you the question, where is Mr. President? Are you aware? Well, um, the president handlers and his team have been following this movement right from when the president left for the Netherlands to Saudi Arabia and then the speculation that he's gone to London and I've been following this trajectory. It's a trajectory that I'm passionate about. Uh, the Nigerian state and her citizens must know where their president is at, at all times. Um, this president was employed by the citizens. And uh, when your employee uh, is nowhere to be found, it's not on his duty post, and uh, you have not sent him out of uh, out for external assignment, or you have done so and uh, he's not yet back, there's a need to make that demand to the country to ask uh, where is the president. Now, I think uh, there's no effective communication in the team of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, to the people. I mean, the, the reasons you have minister. Evans, can you hear me, please? Are you there? All right. Um, uh, the, the, the network connection has been affected. But Evans, of course, who fairly is a lawyer, and I'm hoping that he can give us also, you know, the legal part of this. Um, of course, the Nigerian president, like we said, has been out of country since um, April 23. Um, Saturday made it seven days uh, since he left um, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. So we have Sunday, eight days, Monday, nine days, today, Tuesday, making 10 days since the president finished what he went to Saudi Arabia to do, which is the World Economic Forum's uh, global meetings. Uh, 10 days, we've not heard from him. And Evans was uh, trying to tell us, um, you know, whether you know, he was talking about communication from the president's uh, communication team and whether Nigerians do deserve to know the whereabouts of the president. Um, Evans, so... so um, does the presidency owe it a duty to Nigerians? It's 10 days now. Nigerians have not been told where their president is. Does the presidency owe it a duty to Nigerians to inform them yes. of the president's whereabouts? Yes, they, they, they owe it a duty to Nigerians. Uh, Section 130 created the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the constitution in its entirety places that demand that uh, the government must be accountable to the people. Section uh, 14.2 of the 1999 Constitution emphasizes that, okay, that uh, the security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. So if we have elected a government, we need to know. We need to know where our fate lies in terms of security and the welfare of the people. We need to know what the projections are. We need to know what uh, we are up against. We need to know the current economic status of the country and um, the whereabouts of the president is a is a primus uh, issue under reference in the case. So um, it is a valid demand, one that is of uh, necessity to ask 
about the whereabouts of the president, but we've not had effective communication uh, under this government. And that is one of the bane of the government under reference, that the citizens must be carried along effectively. We were told that he went to Netherlands, from Netherlands to Saudi Arabia, Rea and Saudi Arabia. From Saudi Arabia, we've not gotten any information. The, the, the rest is rumor. Now, we hearing that it's in London, it's not confirmed. No one has put up a statement that is believable. So that is not good enough for a country, given that um, the president is also supposed to attend a seminar in uh, the U.S. The vice president was, uh, you know, uh, duty down to do that. He couldn't go. Now we're going to have a minister to do that. No way. But, but, but Eva, Eva, it's talking it's about the, the, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. You're a lawyer. Does the Constitution of Nigeria explicitly say that the president must inform Nigerians wherever he, he goes? Of course, we know what the Constitution says about writing to the National Assembly when he's leaving, handing power over to the vice president or the Senate president, as the case may be. But does it explicitly say that the president should inform Nigerians of where he's going to per time? Well, there is, is a moral injunction. Uh, an employee cannot um, desert his duty post. Okay? The Constitution need not expressly say so, but when the Constitution says the president must transmit power to the vice, it means that it must, as a matter of necessity, transfer authority to someone. Now, that authority is what counts. That authority will mean that the people will be rest assured that um, someone has taken charge of governance. I mean, that in itself implies that the people are given, you know, a, a sense of belonging. The reason the Constitution says that if, a pre if the president is traveling abroad for medicals or for whatsoever reason, that he must transmit a letter is because of the citizens. Otherwise, the person who is transmitting letter to will not be leading anyone. It is because of the citizens who will ask questions. So I do not agree when people say, go and read Section 5 of the Constitution, he can rule from anywhere in the world. I disagree. There's a reason he has to transmit power to someone who is physically present in the country to give the people a sense of belonging and assurance that uh, governance is not put at abeyance in the absence of a president. So uh, we, we cannot, at this stage of our uh, uh, political development, agree to the fact that uh, the Constitution must expressly say so. There's a reason it has to transmit power. And that reason is because of the people. Governance is a mental construct. It is, it is uh, orchestrated to lead the people. So when that person who is selected, elected, or appointed is not in the country is nowhere to be found, and there are no information. Then people will make uh, expressions. People will talk exactly what is going on now. We need to know where exactly the president is and what he is doing, where he is. Oh. The last time we, we got to understand where he was, was that he was in the Netherlands from there to Saudi Arabia. And after that time, we don't have information. People did not complain, of course, when he was in the Netherlands. People right. did not complain when it was at Saudi Arabia. They could see that. But the complaint started when, after Saudi Arabia, we don't know where the president is. There is a need to make a demand to that effect. Mm -hmm. uh, why do we continue to have this being an issue? Um, we do remember um, what the episode with Omar Musa had of blessed memory from a president of Nigeria. Um, we do also remember what happened uh, during the time of Buhari. In fact, at that point, you know, Nigerians had to rise up to demand that the president obey the constitution by writing officially to the National Assembly to transmit power to his deputy, Yemi Oshibajo. But at, along the line, he began to flout that constitutional provision, and sometimes we wouldn't know where he went to. Uh, but Atinu has already done this before, uh, since he became president in May 20, on May 29 last year. Why do we continue to have this issue in, in Nigeria? We continue to have it because our leaders are far drunk. When the constitution made a clear statement, on what should be done in your absence. It is only befitting that you have that follow the constitution. Otherwise, because the president took an oath to defend the constitution, and the provision of the constitution is that you must transmit power. So when we are so power, our president are so power drunk, our leaders are so power drunk, but that they, they fail to, to put down 
that transmission of power. And I find it very, very uh, disconcerting that we we'll live under such conditions where a president will be violating the laws that he took an oath to defend in a very serious uh, place. If you say in a very serious place, by now, the National Assembly will commence an impeachment proceedings. The, the president will be, will, will be, will, they will be looking for the president to serve him a notice of impeachment. That is what the, we, we, that, that ought to be done because that act is an act of gross misconduct. To be away and absent without uh, following due process, without complying with mm -hmm. the extant laws of the country, will mean that uh, uh, you are in dereliction of your duty. You are not only in dereliction of your duty, you have, uh, you know, you have uh, uh, pushed aside the people whom you are governing and you have taken a walk All right. uh, 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 on a flourish of your own. That is not good enough mm. for a country like ours. All right. Okay? The international communities are watching and investors are looking at how we're, we're governing ourselves. So, 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 so Ivan, who, 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 who should, who should you know, uh, do something about this? If the president will not, um, will continue to act in such a manner, uh, uh, leaving his official itinerary, um, and going on private, you know, trips within that period in Nigeria, so not even know where he is. Who will make sure or will demand, um, on behalf of Nigerians, that this should change and the right thing be done? Under the, under the doctrine of separation of power, it is the National Assembly that have the powers to check the president through the power of impeachment uh, and through oversight. The oversight function predicated under Section 88 and 89 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. But here we have a National Assembly that is complicit and subservient to the president. So you don't have that kind of uh, a democracy that is robust enough to carry out such um, an investigation, a democratic uh, investigation into the matter and serve the president a notice of impeachment, which is what ordinarily should be done. Okay, But in this case, um, our, our National Assembly have don't have that that vibe. They, they don't have that. Uh, uh, even though they 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 are empowered by law to so do, they do not have it. So uh, it becomes difficult. Uh, individuals, uh, citizens of the country can approach the court. Uh, CSO uh, civil organizations can approach the court to ask uh, to to make a demand. Uh, you know, file an uh, for an order of mandamus to have the president. Uh, do his duty or another statutory equitable remedies mm. for the courts to intervene. So you, through judicial review, uh, you can um, make a statement. But ultimately, it is the National Assembly that have that capacity, okay, to do what they ought to do under the law to ensure that um, any time a president is out of the country, uh, there is a proper compliance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for which the president took an oath to defend, for which the vice president took an oath to defend. For which ministers took an oath to defend. If we continue to violate the constitution, then there will be nothing left to fall back to. And the government will have no moral justification to try anyone for violating laws. Because if the government is violating laws, it will have no moral rectitude to, to demand that the citizens be under control and be under the laws of this country. That is the fact, and that is what the, the truth. Every other thing, every other thing that, that, that can be said about this can only be political. But first of all, let us let us establish the fundamental uh, legal issue, which is what I have said so far. And uh, we must, as a matter of necessity, as a country, collectively hold on to this truth, to the fact that we must do the right thing at all times. All right. So, so, so um, um, you're saying that, uh, in effect, the president has not lived up to his oath of office, uh, which is to uphold the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at all times? He has not lived up to the oath of office because uh, part of the provision of the constitution, which he's supposed to comply with, is what we're talking about today, which he did not comply with. Okay? There are other, there are so many other uh, infractions, okay, since the assumption of office of this president. And these infractions have been treated uh, with kid gloves by, by the National Assembly that exists actually to check the president, the excesses of the president. It literally exists to check the excesses of both the president, uh, both the executive and the, and, and the judiciary, and the uh, executive uh, legislature, okay? So it is, it is at this point that the true principles of democracy is actually tested, okay? All the while we talk about election, we talk about democracy, we talk about development and growth, 
But the acid test, the acid test is where the country is stretched to this point where the president had to leave the country. He must do the needful. Where he fails to do the needful, he has failed as a president. Okay? Where you have a law and right. you flout it. At number one citizen of the country, it means you are you are you are in for it, and uh, the issue should come with certain level of right. consequences. Uh, quite, quite some uh, very serious uh, um, you know, points you've made, Evans, and uh, for what you're saying, if it, it ends up being a constitutional breach, then it's a serious uh, uh, issue that you've raised. But I, I'll try to ask you from the other side. You know, you know, put myself in the president's shoes. If it when we come back from the break, for those of you watching, please stay with us. We'll pay bills, and when we return, we continue with our conversation. Welcome back. We still have Ivan Zofeli, uh, public affairs analyst, legal practitioner with us, uh, joining us all the way from Georgia uh, in the United States of America, and where um, he joins us from via video link. And of course, Nigeria's president, um, Bola Metid, who has been out of the country since April 23. And of course, on April 29, he concluded his uh, activities. He went to Netherlands, went to Saudi Arabia for official engagements. But on leaving Saudi Arabia, Nigerians do not know where the president is as we speak. And some Nigerians are asking, where is President Bola Matilba? Well, is this a germane question? Should Nigerians be concerned about the whereabouts of their president? And does the Nigerian presidency owe it a duty to Nigerians to inform them of his movement per time, especially when it's outside the country? Uh, Ivan Zufeli, I want to come back to you. Um, it, it may be argued that the president has a duty, or the presidency has a duty, to inform Nigerians of the president's whereabouts when he is on official assignments, official trips. Now, if he's in London, as they say he is, he means he flew from the Middle East, um, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, to Europe, um, to London, to England, to the United Kingdom, this is suspected to be something of the official uh, itinerary of the president. So, so can we make a case for the president that now he's doing something private, and what is private is private. It need not be public knowledge. No, 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 that, 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 that's wrong. Uh, every citizen of Nigeria must have the itinerary of the president. He's an employee, okay? Whether it is private or public, I mean, the president does not have a private life any longer upon becoming the president. He does not, okay? So if he's on a private assignment, maybe medicals and all that, the people ought to know, and he ought, he ought to transmit a letter to that effect. Okay, that is what is required under the law. Every other thing will be settlement, will be making a case for him. Such case cannot stand the test of time. We are talking about the number one man of the country. His office is the highest in the land. His absence is felt when he's not there by every citizen, all and sundry. No one is saying the president should not have his pastime his vacation, his medical activities and all that. Everyone created by God should have such time. But for the sensitive nature of his office and for the purpose of countryhood and the brotherhood of man, there is a need for the president to inform the nation okay, of his intention to uh, take on private activities whilst he's on his official duties, okay? We should have his itinerary. That is, I mean, we talk, talk about civilized countries of the world where citizens are active and agile about the political and social economic condition of their country. These demands are not, um, they are not new. They are cogent and reflective demands of the a, of a citizens of a country uh, that, is, that are being governed by a president. So I, uh, the argument of making a case for him to excuse him from being accountable to the people cannot be said so. Look at Section 22 of the 1999 Constitution. He must be held accountable to the people by the press. So even the press do not know where he is. The citizens do not know where he is. We do not know where he is. And that is not good enough. All right. uh, there's a reason he has a team. And that team must be responsible to Nigerians in his absence. All right. Uh, uh, Evans, um, 
the speculation in some quarters is that uh, President Bolatinbu is in London and that he may, may be there uh, on, or for medical uh, reasons. Now, we cannot confirm this, this, this speculation. Uh, we cannot authenticate it. But hypothetically speaking, if the president is there uh, for medical reasons, to see a doctor or to take a medical rest or checkup, um, what does it say of the much touted uh, uh, accomplishments and achievements of this administration in the healthcare sector? Especially remembering that some hours ago, the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Tunji Alausa, was on national TV saying that there is no crisis in the health sector. He also said that people are leaving India and other countries and are coming to Nigeria to take advantage of the quality health care in the country on that table. Yes, I mean, uh, well, that, that, those, are, those are issues of fact and uh, statements that are, we have not found evidence. There, is no, there are no evidence to the effect that people are leaving India and other countries to seek medical solution in Nigeria. I mean, we don't have such a record. We should uh, consult our aviation sector to find out how. All right, their country. Ivan, I, I, I hear some 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 people uh, say that um, some some medical practitioners have gone on X to say that oh, they have some clients who came in from the UK for for cosmetic surgery uh, for BBL. You know what BBL means. Yes. Uh, well, uh, those ones who are born, anybody can go anywhere. But the truth is that is that a proof that you now have a proper public health care system? People are coming for BBL. Uh, I mean, what, what is that uh, a, a national achievement that we now have a proper public health care from the, from the misery index uh, that we see in our country? These things are, for me, very very cosmetic, as, as you said. They are not uh, proof. They are not solid proof. They are not evidence enough to show that there's an advancement in the medicals in the country. If we have a major surge in advancement in our public health care, the whole world we know. Nigerians we know. I mean, I mean, we're, we're still talking about the same hospitals we visit. I mean, that we stay there all day. We don't have doctors on seat. You have them. They are not uh, prepared. No, you don't have medicine. You don't have... Uh, all right. Uh, Evans, we, 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 we want to bring in a, a second guest uh, tonight. Uh, we have uh, Yomi Oke Ashiwaju, who is a public affairs analyst, and he's joining us from Ogun State. Uh, Mr. Oke Ashiwaju, good evening to you. If you can hear me, welcome to the program. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Are, are you aware of the whereabouts of Mr. President? <laughs> what, what a funny question. Who am I to speak about the whereabouts of the president? I can't possibly talk about the whereabouts of the president uh, because I do not belong to uh, his kitchen cabinet and uh, all the presidents and the cases. So the information at the disposal of Nigerians at the moment is what I'm also is what I'm, I also have. But um, I think if the president is not in the country and the vice president is in the country. I think the business of governance can still continue. It is okay for Nigerians to ask for the whereabouts of their president because uh, they entrusted in him their mandate and um, he is responsible to Nigerians. However, uh, the only provision that we have in the constitution for the absence of the president is to have the vice president around. So if the vice president is the country, I think it's still uh, the business of governance can still continue. But nevertheless, we should still demand for the whereabouts of the president. Let me submit for now. All right. I, I can see Mr. President on your screen there, um, uh, on our TV screens, you know, getting off um, the presidential uh, um, uh, jet. And of course, um, it looks hale and hearty. Do you understand why Nigerians will always speculate on the pres president's health? Not just Tinubu, but even we're talking about Buhari as well, each time he stays uh, outside the country abroad for a longer period of time than his official itinerary uh, told us he would. I think uh, it's not, like you said, it's not even peculiar to Nigeria uh, as a country. 
uh, in other climes too, uh, they are so concerned about the health of their president. You see, uh, to become to be the head of the family uh, is a task on its own, which comes with um, you know uh, challenges with health and all that. Let alone becoming the president of a country and a country such as Nigeria or even any other country there. So there is so much pressure on uh, the health status of whosoever is the president of a country. And so that's why we are always very concerned about the health of our president. Uh, it's not only now, if you recall, in 2007, uh, was in, sorry, 2011, thereabout, uh, okay, 2007, that's Yadra. During Yadra's, uh, even before Yadra became the president, there were concerns about his health. Uh, the, 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 the former president who handed over to him, President Olusha Gombasojo, assured us that uh, Yadra was ill and hearty. But of course, we all saw the end. And uh, it has always been like that for most presidents. We are always concerned about their health, especially when they have shown some symptoms and signs that shows that um, they are prone to falling sick or have a peculiar or particular health challenge. So it's not. It's, it's not alien to, 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 the, to the system of governance, not just Nigeria, but even everywhere in the world. Uh, in the U.S., people are concerned about the health of um, uh, their president as well. Uh, there are a couple of times that the president has um, tripped and um, fallen off from uh, the stage and even from staircase, and they worry about his health status. Uh, the only difference is that they are quite transparent over there. You get to understand, you get to know, you get to um, have a knowledge of the health status of your of the head of your country. The same thing in Britain, for example, um, uh, Prince, Char Prince uh, Charles, his health status is currently open to the public, even not just um, people in Great Britain. Here in Nigeria and all over the world, we are aware of his um, current health status and all that. Uh, but the only thing here in Nigeria is that we try to manage the health status of our president. We try to manage the health status of our political heads uh, because there is a concern that um, some people are ready to take over or use that opportunity to take over government. So most times they usually keep this information out from the public or out from uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, citizens of the country so that uh, unscrupulous elements will not take advantage of the failing health of the president right. to begin to nurture right. uh, some uh, you know, agenda that is right. not open to the public. Interesting, Amy. I want to go back to Ivan Sofeli. Ivan, um, the president, we're told, um, some reports say that he had to charter a private jet. Um, when he was moving from the Netherlands to Saudi Arabia, uh, the story goes that the um, presidential jet 001 uh, developed a fault. And then the second one, the backup one, also, uh, also had an issue. And therefore, they had to charter the president a private jet. But... Uh, looking at the, the, the images on our screen, what I saw that looks like the official jet of the president, but I'm not aware anyway. Um, <clears throat> uh, if this is the case, what does this say, especially bearing in mind the fact that you know, billions of naira are you know, budgeted for uh, annually for the maintenance of the presidential fleet? Well, it, it, speaks, of, um, it speaks a lot about uh, the uh, logistics or the planning and structure of um, uh, the presidential fleet, because we've seen over and over again how that they budget a lot. All right, we seem to have a bit of a connection issue with Evans again. Um, uh, Yamin, you want to say something about this and the issues with the Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I think uh, we should worry truly that um, despite the billions of naira or millions of dollars um, appropriated for the maintenance of the, uh, of the presidential jets. Uh, we should not be hearing news about um, presidential jets having issues or, you know, mechanical faults and all that. What we wonder, what, what about the appropriation for these uh, purpose? But of course, you agree with me that uh, there's way between appropriating funds in the budget for a particular project or a, for a particular uh, uh, whatever that we call it, and execution of that project or disbursement of the funds. So most times, more often than not, what we see on paper does not translate mostly into practical um, execution. And that's, that's the same thing that usually happens even with the um, 
hospital in the Astro Rock. Yes, the Astro Rock Clinic. You realize that sometimes we see in the budget that so much has been appropriated for the Astro Rock Clinic. And what we wonder why those in the presidency will still not uh, use the clinic there and will still want to seek um, medical treatment abroad. So it simply goes that sometimes some of these appropriations are right. only seen on the paper. They are right. not uh, translated in terms of um, practical uh, uh, you know, execution of these uh, pro uh, projects that are found in the budget. So I, I think for a country like Nigeria, we should be more concerned about um, execution of the budgets, or the execution of the projects that are captured in the budget, especially very critical ones that will protect the image of our country. Because for me, I feel uh, we are not selling this country well if right. uh, we, are, we, are, we are telling the world that our plane or especially our presidential jet are faulty and the president will have to hire right. you know, a okay. private jet or commercial jet to jet out of the country. I think it doesn't speak well of us for our PR. All right. Yeah, me okay, Ashiwaju. We'll come back to you also. Of course, I'll give Ivan Sofili a chance to have a say on this particular issue because, you know, the vice president also was uh, had an issue with his own, pres uh, his own uh, official um, carrier or his uh, plane, aeroplane. So we'll talk about that when we come back. For those of you watching, please stay with us. Don't touch it out. Politics 6, you will be right back. Welcome back. So discussing the whereabouts of the Nigerian president, our guest tonight, reaching us from Georgia and the United States of America, um, uh, Ivan Sufili, a lawyer, and of course we also have a public affairs analyst who reaches us via video link. Um, he's with us here in Nigeria, Yemi Oke Ashiwaju. Gentlemen, it's good to have you on the program uh, tonight. Ivan, um, your thoughts you. on on this uh, matter of the presidential uh, fleet having issues, um, and of course maybe causing the president um, to, as it's been reported, uh, use a private a chartered flight. Yes, um, it, it goes a long way to show that there is no proper maintenance. I mean, uh, if the first aircraft have developed fault, and then the second one that the vice president is supposed to use also developed fault, I don't know whether the faults are the same or different. It means that something might be wrong somewhere. I mean, um, President Tinubu, since he has assumed office, he has traveled on several occasions. He's been to Saudi Arabia before now. He's been to Dubai. He's been to France, uh, he's been to Netherlands, he's been to some countries before now, okay? Um, all of a sudden, you have two aircraft among the presidential fleet having problems at the same time, which is going to deprive us, by the way, from attending uh, this, uh, there's a high power uh, delegation uh, world conference that's going to take place in Texas, in Dallas, Texas, wherein we will not be there. All the countries in Africa, major countries well, in well, Africa. Well, the, there, minister, the Minister of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs, Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister, will represent Nigeria at that yes. conference. Yes, the Minister will represent Nigeria, but the Minister cannot enter into bilateral. He cannot enter into any bilateral agreement or multilateral ag agreement on behalf of the country. Okay, it has to be the President who ought to do that. Now, now we have this. That is why I said that um, the President itinerary, the conflict that we're having with um, the aircrafts or the presidential fleet is something that we need to look look into because uh, a, a country of this nature it speaks a lot. Uh, the international community will be looking at us like, are we serious, really? Uh, that if you look at the pre president of Cape Verde, will be there. The president of uh, the major countries in Africa, they are all there. Liberia and the rest of them. The list is long. The Nigeria that is actually the giant of Africa in the manner of speaking, that's supposed to be the big brother that should lead every other country, cannot get there because there is a presidential aircraft that is not fit for, for use, or that the president is nowhere to be found. Okay? These reasons are, are, are reasons that will point to the direction of the fact of unseriousness. That is a fact. It's not that uh, we, we, we can place sentiments around it and place every, whatever it is we want to place around it. But the truth is that a sovereign state having not to get to uh, a point of call just by virtue of the fact that you have uh, technical issues with the presidential jet and that the president will have to take a commercial uh, a, a plane or to, to complete his journey and all that. It speaks the volume. It speaks of lack of preparedness, lack of vision, lack of proper pro projection, 
lack of, of mismanagement of the sovereign state of a country. So this is not what we need. At this time in our lives where we are looking up to the world for investors and we're looking up to the world for all right. uh, collaborations all right. and all, all the, how they like. So we do not need this kind of all right. thing. Interesting. Uh, Yemi, Yemi um, I've, I've taken the time to look at, because uh, I've been monitoring the presidency's uh, Twitter or X, and I haven't seen anything regarding uh, the president's itinerary or why uh, he's not back home. Uh, the only thing about trips is that um, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs will now represent Tinubu at the U.S.-Africa summit, but nothing about uh, his whereabouts. However, however, presidential media aide, um, this is a special assistant or advisor to the president uh, on um, uh, information and strategy by Yonanuga, uh, put out a tweet saying President Bola Tinubu, along with his aides, um, will return to, from Europe tomorrow. President Bola Tinubu, along with his aides, will return back to the country uh, from Europe tomorrow. Um, um, is this the, the, the way or the right manner uh, that the, the presidency or the president's aide should communicate with Nigerians? And what does it say, if not? Uh, all right. Um, first, we need to establish the fact that uh, presidential aides, especially media aides, cannot possibly speak on behalf of the president without his express permission. No matter how urgent uh, the information is, you, need, you still need to run it through your principal. So if, the, if Mr. President himself does not want an information divulged or does not, does, uh, does not expressly approve of an information to be released to the public, uh, it will be irresponsible of the uh, media aides to go ahead and release such information. Yeah, but, 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 but it, 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 it doesn't look official, yeah, um, 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 Yemi. It, it says that the president, um, President Tinubu, will return from Europe tomorrow. That, you know, it's just loosely put, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. President Tinubu will return from Europe tomorrow. It's, it's one sentence. Um, almost as yes. if it sounds like, I'm, I'm just speculating here, but it's, it's, it almost seems like... Um, is okay. You guys have been asking. You just you return tomorrow, you know. The yeah, that, president. That, yeah. anyway, that, I'm going somewhere. All right. I'm going somewhere. You see, he had to release that information because there has been so much queries on hex towards this same man. That where is your president? Tell us about your missing um, principal. And of course, if he does not have the express approval of the president to give the full details of the president's itinerary, he won't respond to such query or, rest or, or, or questions from Nigerians. Now, what he has, the only information is privy to is the fact that the president may likely return tomorrow. And just to douse the tension, just to you know, feed us with one information or the other, that was why he had to release that teaser that, listen, the president will return on Wednesday. But of course, you cannot, Press cannot pick that as an official statement because it, it didn't come out the way other official statements usually come out, well paragraphed and of course duly signed at the end of the um, release with his designation and all that with a signature. So what he is told or what he was told to say to Nigerians is what he has just offered. If he has much more information at his disposal, I guess he would do much more. But like I said earlier on, these guys, media aides or presidential media aides, are not responsible to the country. They are only responsible to their principal. They did not sign or they did not um, sign any oath of allegiance to the country. That's why nobody swears them in, kind of. It is the, their principal that they are responsible to. It's only people like the ministers and some other cabinet members that are probably sworn in by the president that uh, we can hold responsible for most of the things that they say. For example, if it's the Minister of Information that's speaking to us now, we would know that, okay, truly, this person must give us good, uh, due information that we truly deserve and not just... Um, so, so if we're going by what you're saying, the then, then if you're going by what you're saying, then the presidency still hasn't spoken to Nigerians on the president's whereabouts. But I want to bring in... Officially. Yes, I want to bring in Evans at this point. Yeah. Evans, what, what do you say to this? Officially, the president has not spoken to us. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah, the statement the president will return tomorrow is not official. I mean, 
is just one that is meant to ward off anxiety um, and then to just put us on a place of patience uh, or to douse the tension that have risen overnight until now that the president is nowhere to be found. So um, ordinarily, there should be a proper statement, okay, that would detail out what the president, why the president was away and why uh, the, the citizens could no longer, you know, track exactly where the president had been after he left Saudi Arabia. But that was the last time we heard about it. And the, the, the issue of him going to London is still a conjecture. And that conjecture so, so defined, uh, you ought to, if you are going to release a statement, the statement ought to be robust enough to come with certain apology. Um, and because, I mean, we're, we're sovereign state. We, we demand to know where the president is. And all the logistical issues that have happened, the failed uh, aircraft, uh, the other conference that's going to go on in Texas and all that, there should be a, a statement from the presidency to that effect, from the media aid of the president to the effect that this is uh, the position. In so doing, you give the citizens a sense of belonging. They will no longer worry as they would ordinarily worry. We are we, worried about the president because we are concerned, because we, we should know uh, the president is an employee of the people. The people have a hope and a stake in this democratic engagement. And that stake must not be defiled by the government in power. So by the time you take you, 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 the president is aware and we're not, we're, we're not aware, then you come and throw a statement like this in, on a Tuesday afternoon that the president will remain to. I mean, that statement is like taking a poisonous leaf to a purification feast. There's already there's already tension. There's problem already, and you are you are issuing a statement. You are not doing it proper. I think that statement was ill-advised. It ought to have been detailed. All right. Um, it ought to have been addressed to a people that are waiting to find out the outcome of an activity. Okay. Interesting. Even so, you talked about communication uh, in this administration. Um, Yemi, I want to take your thoughts on that. Um, bearing in mind that this is uh, one sentence coming from uh, Presidential Special Advisor on Strategy. And we've not seen, haven't seen, uh, I checked just now, the presidency's ex handle anything about this. Um, would you say that the communications in this uh, and President Timbo's administration has left more to be desired or has lived up to um, uh, the bill? No, to, to be honest, to be honest, um, the communication of this presidency is pretty much okay. We have um, the special advisor on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngelele, who usually speaks to us. We also have um, Bayo Nonuga now, special advisor on information and strategy, who also speaks to us. So I think uh, those are the two major spokespersons of this administration, and truly, they usually engage Nigerians on all relevant platforms, including social media platforms. So I think it is safe to say that uh, this government usually speaks to us as Nigerians. But like I said, where there is, um, where there is no uh, express approval from the presidency for these people to speak to us, if they should speak to us, and uh, there is a fault in whatever um, speech or release they make, uh, the right. president himself will not be happy. All right, Yemi, thank so you so very kindly. We have to leave it at that, at that tonight. Yeah, I, I, I don't right. I, I know Ivan has one or two things to say, but well, we have to go. Yemi, okay, Ashiwaju, thank you very much. Ivan Sofeli, we also appreciate your time as well. Um, but legal practitioner, of course, Yemi, he's a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time tonight. You're welcome. All right, then that's the size of our package. And, um, of course, we'll look forward to the safe return. Uh, tomorrow to Abuja, uh, wherever the president chooses to land, of Nigeria's President Bola Matibu, and of course, um, uh, we wish him well. My name is Kofi Bartels. We'll return tomorrow with more on Politics HQ, but for now, keep watching New Central TV. Good night.